Okay, uh, just a couple of verses. Um, I'm going to read from Proverbs 22. Okay, Proverbs 22 and verse 1. It says, A good name is to be chosen rather than great riches, loving favor uh, than silver and gold. A good name is to be chosen, meaning um, your uh, testimony, uh, our reputation, right? That is to be chosen even more than silver or gold, more than material possessions and treasures and riches and so on, right? Um, so that is what we see here. And then if we turn to uh, Revelation chapter 3, right? Revelation 3, and this is um, uh, the Lord's message to the church in Sardis. Um, Revelation 3 and verse 1, um, these things says he who has the seven spirits of God and the seven stars, I know your works. That you have a name, that you are alive, but you are dead. Okay, so, a name referring to reputation or testimony, or um, you know, what is the impression that people have uh, about us on the outside, right? So, so it says that Proverbs twenty-two says, okay, a good name is to be chosen uh, more than gold or silver, any of the treasures. And here, it's talking about you know uh, a church, a group of people. Uh, followers of the Lord who have a name, right? who have a reputation, right? who have a, you know, this is this is what their general impression of people is um, about them. And the impression is that you are, uh, that you have a, you have a name that you are alive, but you are dead. So, so one is, of course, the importance of testimony, the importance of our, uh, uh, you know, reputation, testimony. Front of people, but more important than that is um, God's assessment of us. You know, uh, His assessment of us, His evaluation of us, and our reputation in front of Him. That that actually goes beyond because that's the beyond people's assessments and evaluation. Because that is a true evaluation. That is a true you know picture. And so uh, this morning we just pray um, and say, "Okay, God." You know, I, I just want your true assessment, true evaluation. Yes, you know, more than what people can say, more than the reputation, my reputation with people, or, uh, my friends, family, whatever, you know, uh, more than that, Lord, I want your assessment of me. And, uh, yeah, let's just pray um, on those lines. Right? Father, we thank you. Thank you, Lord, that uh, yeah, a good name is to be chosen than treasures of gold and silver. Um, but Lord, you see in Revelation 3 that uh, Lord, your um, true assessment, Father God, that goes beyond what people can see on the outside. And uh, Lord, even Lord, our, well, our evaluation that people might have, the reputation that we might have in front of people, Father God. Um, and Lord, we, we, we ask, Father God, that that you will pronounce uh, your assessment, Lord, your evaluation uh, uh, of us over our lives, Lord. And we know that grace and truth come together, Father God, that uh, it is always with grace and truth. And so, God, we, we receive that this morning, God. We receive that today. Your assessment of ourselves, your evaluation, Lord, which comes with grace and truth. We receive that, Father God. We thank you that uh, there is grace, this empowerment, to make changes and, and at the same time lord it comes as a true evaluation as uh, lord, uh, a clear assessment of who we are uh, father we thank you that uh, that you are with us uh, to do this lord and i just pray that uh, uh, may our lives be in an alignment lord uh, alignment with god your alignment with the truth alignment with who who we have called us to be, Lord, may our lives be in alignment to your word. We just want to thank you. We give you all the praise and glory. In Jesus' master's name, we pray. Amen. Okay, IRP. <laughs> We're in that place again. Um, so, yeah, let's take this time to, uh, to you know, probably address any doubts, questions, any clarifications uh, that you might have. And also, if you've started the work, uh, you have about uh, uh, 
according to our timeline have uh, um, you know some more time uh, a week to submit the uh, status status of whatever work is done right on the 29th same time next week um so but before that if there's any uh, you know anything that you want to share about your status of uh, or any any place that you're getting stuck or anything uh, anything about the progress that you're making you know please go ahead uh, any questions that you might have um, could uh, you know go ahead and ask that also right yeah Okay. So over to you. So in line with your topic, in line with um, yeah, yes, uh, Lubega, please go ahead. Still, my question. Good morning, Pastor and my colleagues. Good morning. Uh, good morning. My question is: Am I good to go, or I still need to wait from you, sir? No, you're good to go. Um, I think I, we, we spoke about this yesterday, I mean, last class. Um, biblical view on sexual immorality and its implications to your local church. Right? Um, so please go ahead. Please go ahead. And uh, yeah, so just a couple of questions. So how do you, how do you plan to go ahead with this research, uh, Vega? Because it's a sensitive topic, right? Um, sexual immorality and its consequences in a church right local church your local church so the scope of research everything is good so but how do you plan to go ahead and uh, you know do this research um are you still there uh, yeah i can see i have just come come back pastor i'm sorry come okay again. I had lost right. the internet. Okay. Yeah. Um, so you want me to repeat what I said? Okay, let me just. So the topic is good. You, uh, the scope of your research is good. You've restricted it to the local church. That's fine. But um, uh, can you hear me? You, Pastor. I'm hearing yeah. you, sir. Yeah. Yeah. So my, my question is how do you plan to do this research? How do you plan to carry out this research? Collect information and so on. So how do you plan to do that? Yeah, uh, I think, Pastor, you also know how sexual immorality is real a challenge in this generation, not in my church only, but it, it has mm -hmm. always been in human history. It has always mm -hmm. been. A, a, but now there is a, we are, we are like a going into the Sodom and Gomorrah scenario where the traditional churches are now authorizing homosexuality where uh, i'm just giving on that side the way people are gbt lesbianism and others but leaving that aside even mm. in the straight media where uh, where people are behaving man on on woman there is also so many challenges locally in mm. in my african context especially my church where uh, mm. you find so many people having extra marine affairs people are having kids outside the wedlock mm -hmm. young kids are going into sexual debit before marriage fornication incest and others so it becomes a burden to me even before i started this college uh, this mm -hmm. college degree it has always been a burden because some of i know so many people you will find that in my location maybe most of the african countries 80 percent of the people are mm. we are born outside the wedlock mm. very few people are in the way in the in the wedlock now my concern is should we let this one go like that or should we pronounce ourselves at what should be done mm. so that's why i think i i if i'm given that permission i can do some little research because i know people personally who are passing through that that's why when i sent you part of my my table of content it shows that i'm going to much as i will pass through the bible just as i showed you i will look at what happened before mountain sinai and give an example of tama and judah 
and then I'll talk about after Mountain Sinai. I give an example, a case study of the the, the King David and Bathsheba. Then yeah, that, I, so that's uh, sorry, sorry to interrupt, Lubega, but that's the biblical, you know, um, perspective foundation. But how are you going to do the research? You know, because your your topic is the implications in the local church, right? In your local church. So yeah, you said you knew of people who are going through this, but then to find out um, the extent of, you know, what they are, how they are living, and the kind of damage that is there, you know, uh, how are you going to find that out? Because it's I'm going to use some some research tools like questionnaires. Mm -hmm. So do you yes, think I'm... people will be okay to open up and talk to you about this? Best thing, uh, no. My position and my talking to the to the to my pastor here. Yes, they are always open because my background mm. is also school principal. So I usually get mm. to know those people because they end up wanting some assistance. I see. Okay. Okay. So let your sample size be sufficient enough. You know, sample size in the sense the number of questionnaires, the number of responses that you get. It should be, um, you know, something that from which you can form a conclusion, right? So, um, you know, uh, so you know, at least fifty, I think, would be a, you know, sizable number. Uh, like, how big is the church? How many people attend the church? The church is between four four hundred fifty to five hundred. Okay. The challenge will not be the question. I mean, the, the, the challenge will not be the number of people who can uh, give me that information. The challenge is the time frame. I have a week. No, you have a week to give the status, uh, but you have time till April to finish. Thank you, sir. Yeah. So let me just uh, uh, a bit, let me just share that timeline uh, and show so that um, uh, we are clear. Right. Um, just one second. Um, yeah, so uh, please, please please check you know the resources whatever uh, uploaded uh, in the classroom section so you can you know you can be clear about this. So as you can see, um, I think it's coming up on the screen. Okay, so as you can see, um, you know twenty point number three, a draft submitted draft before nine a.m. India time that is on by next Thursday with the current status of work. So yeah, so whatever is the status of work. So which means that if you contacted, you know, maybe four people, five people, whatever is the status, you mention it. Okay, this is what I set out to do. These are the discussions I had with my pastor, and uh, you know, these are the people I have met, and. Uh, so, so the most important thing would be to form the questionnaire if you have not formed already, and then, you know, whether by way of interview or by way of uh, uh, actually people filling in the questionnaire, you get this information. So, so 29th is to give a status of the work done. So all of us are aware. Okay, this is where we stand, and what is the you know what is the amount of work, quantum of work that needs to be done before the final submission. So the paper will be the report, sorry, um, the research report will be, um, has to be submitted by, this is for online students, um, by the 4th of April, online and, and in, in, class, in person also, by 4th of April, right? Um, India time, 9 a.m. on or before, 4th of April. And the, the presentation of it, Happens on the fourth, eleventh, and eighteenth of April, right? That's for in-person and online students. So, so I just wanted to remind us about that so that we we don't lose track of the timeline and uh, we can plan out and pace our work according, right? Okay. Okay. Any other questions? Anyone else? Good morning, Pastor. Good morning, Pastor. Yes. Pastor, I have uh, prepared uh, 25 questions to ask uh -huh. for these families, like whom mm -hmm. I've been meeting. And okay. uh, I've just, I, I just managed to get uh, 15 to 17 um, parents mm -hmm. in my local church. So 
uh, can I just extend my research to like other churches? Sure, you can. Sure. Around me and uh, also, Pastor, when I will ask them the question, which I'll be doing from today onwards, I'll be visiting their house and yeah. I'll be asking them. So when I'll like whatever um, a response uh, I'll get from them, uh, I individually under that parent I have to uh, write. Uh, mention those responses so like uh, end of my interview like uh, then um how will i um you know wind up like uh, like how will i wind up like okay i have the questions i will be having the responses mm -hmm. and then based um, on this research uh yeah. based on the word of god i will um like how yeah. will i Wind, bring everything together and uh... so that's the thing now so for, first of all to tabulate your findings you got maybe 50 50 responses right um, you you put that together okay so each question has to be tabulated right so that's how you put it together so each question let's say um, question number one was uh, on profession okay what the uh, both the let's say are both the parents working Okay, because that's one of the things, right? You'll consider uh, the pressure of raising mm -hmm. children. Right? So are the, both the parents working? Okay, let's say um, people have answered, some people have answered yes, some people have answered uh, only one. Okay, so you put that together. So out of 50 responses, uh, how many are saying yes, both are working? How many are saying one of, uh, uh, one of us is working? Um, how many of the fathers are working? How many of the mothers? So something I'm just saying, you know. So for each of these questions, you have to tabulate it. So you put it in a tabular, uh, or you know, you put it together, and based on that, you will arrive at some of these percentages. You know, you can say, okay, our 180 percent of the parents said this. So so based on that, you form your conclusions. Right. So, so, for every every question, so for I'm every sorry? question, so for every question, I have to. Uh, yeah. yeah. So the yeah, you have to tabulate it. Um, yeah, every question. So, so in an Excel sheet, if you have, you know, let's say 25, 30 questions, you can put it in one column, and then you have all the responses, right? For this question, yes or no expo, uh, response or. For the other question, maybe it has you know some other response. So you have to tabulate it in that way. Right. So only then you will uh, you'll uh, you'll be able to uh, you know form some conclusion. You'll right. So that's how you do it. Uh, and then just go through that. Uh, were you able to go through that um, PDF on basic research, how to go about doing the research? I went through it, but uh, faster, but not able to grasp everything. So. Ah, so you can you can also check online. You know, if you want in a simpler manner, so how to tabulate, uh, how to tabulate the results of a questionnaire. You know, just do a, you know, uh, maybe on YouTube there are some videos. Uh, I'm sure you know there there will be enough and more resources, so you can you know, they can help you a step by step thing. So you. Put that together and of course you know what is the solution go back to the word I'm going to take a solution from the word uh, give a biblical perspective for each of these problems challenges that they are facing and uh, yeah and that's it yeah okay yeah so about questionnaires uh, about the number of questions i know this particular book suggested you know you should have at 25 or 30 questions or something like that, but you can have more. So the so this question, you know, your question has 31. Yeah, it's it's fine. It's fine. Uh, how many ever questions that you feel is important, is necessary for your finding to have a solid reason? Okay. So when I say the majority of the people, so what is that? Is majority 60? Percent is majority ninety nine percent, right? So you will give a number, saying okay, avoiding terms like majority or thing. You'll say okay, 
80% of the people feel this way, or 80% of the you know, your peers on the missionaries in Cambodia. So, uh, you know, 80% of the missionaries who went to Cambodia. So, you, yeah, you're giving questionnaires to five missionaries. Five missionaries only? Are there more? Only yes, five. Uh, yeah, because I contacted them, but most of them are quite caught up with the mission uh, mission work. So I was only yeah. So the, yeah, so literally, so that's the challenge. You know, we you can't base your research on just five. It's too small a number, right? So find out how many missionaries are there totally from Nagaland uh, in Cambodia, and we'll have to get more. You know, get their permission. Uh, say this is for uh, because you can't base it on five. You're, you're saying okay, uh, five cannot be representative of all, right? So, so, uh, so you're able to find out how many uh, missionaries are there totally in Cambodia. Or, or Nagara. Ten, ten plus. Ten plus. Yeah. Okay. Would Would you have a like a firm number. So this 10 plus are from one particular church or denomination? Yeah, from different churches and denominations. From different churches. Oh, okay. 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 So these five probably can help you, you know, have access to the other other five or other, you know, seven five. Because uh, I feel this five is very less to base a conclusion. But of course, the total number of missionaries from Nagaland, if it's going to be only 10, it's like 50%, then it works okay. But it'll be great if you can get contact all um, and just say, you know, it's just a 10 minutes, 15 minutes thing for them to sit down and you know, finish the question. Or you can say, I'll write it down. Just, um, you know, maybe you can come on a WhatsApp call, maybe a 10 minute WhatsApp call. Just go through the questions and then I'll you, know, you can actually write it down so they can answer because I noticed that all your questions are open and very descriptive. So it's not a yes or no. So it, it's going to take time for people to fill in, right? Probably that's why. Um, but you chose to have it as open ended, it's fine. But these are the challenges, right? Um, so you'll have to address those challenges. So please try again. Okay. Uh, don't stop with just five. Please try again. Okay. I'll try. Okay. Any other doubts? So, uh, let's see. okay. So, uh, Libby, you 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 change it from spiritual test to a study on the rise of depression among young adults in India. So your you know your scope is India, which means you're collecting information from every state, every union territory, right? Um, yes, sir. So, sorry. Yes, sir. That's right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. So let it be representative of. North, South, East, West, everywhere, Central India, um, young adults, you know, urban, rural, right? So it's it's a lot of work. So um, yeah. So I hope you can cover everything, like people in village, people in city, um, etc. And young adults. When you say young adults, what is the age group? So yes, you define sir. yeah, you define that as well. And uh, yeah, so. Yeah. So, how do you? Yeah, you go ahead. Um, I'm, I'm just uh, wondering how you'll get this information. Yes, statistics will be available online, um, but they are limited. They could be limited to urban uh, yes. India. May not cover the entire length and breadth of the nation. So you'll have to make sure it covers everything. Uh, otherwise, it won't be just India. It'll be just you know, a few states, 
or one city. Yes. yes. Yeah. So you'll have to if you if you want to change the scope of your research, you know, if you want to reword the, the title, maybe one state, maybe one city. That's also fine. But do it, you know, when you say India, it means India. Right? <laughs> There's no going back. So yeah, you think about it. Sir, I will say and I'll mention. Yeah, you think about it. You in the, the title, if you're saying young adults in the city where you're from, that is also fine. But yes. yeah, but you but you you need to decide and mention it, right? Okay. Yes. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay. Um, so, Bishesh, I see that compassion to the poor and destitute aspect of uh, ministry. Um, so that also, you might have to reword it, retitle it. Um, poor and destitute in ministry. So, you know, in terms of research, um, you're finding out, okay, what is the need of these people? Um, and who are the people who are actually helping them, right? So it, it helps to put a, you know, uh, a geographical location to it. Poor and destitute, where, you know, in your city, in your town, in your state, uh, or in India. So you, I think you need to put a, you know, you need to ask yourself the question where. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's it's good, poor and destitute, uh, you know, ministry to the poor and destitute, where? So, and how, like, who's having impact, you know, all these things, right? Um, what is the work, what was the work earlier done, what is being currently done, how else, you know, what is the gap? All these things are there. What is the gap in the sense? This is the work, but this is the need. Okay, so all that is the information. So when you when you put a place, you will get this information. Okay, this is this is the population of the city or population of this town, and these are the people who are living in uh, you know, below the poverty line, you know, BPL kind of a thing. This is a thing, and so and this, these are the kind of ministries which are being done. Right. So the importance of that. So. Um, so you're looking at researching believers uh, and thinking maybe from a Christian perspective, right? The church is a contribution to widows' orphans for an institute. So, um, so it, it needs to be where but you ask yourself the question: Where do I want to do this? From where do I want to get this information? So that will give you focus and that will also give you clarity and accuracy in the research. I, I hope you got that. Yeah. Okay. Great. So please change it. I, you know, it's been there like that uh, for a long time. The title. So, yeah. Okay. Anyone else has anything to share? Anything to? Uh, anything to report? <laughs> uh, how are things going? Okay. Um, uh, Pastor, is it okay to extend yeah. the research to our Bible college students who are ministers' children? Uh, yeah, yeah. So your you see your title is uh, ministers' kids, right? So, so whatever they are doing, that's fine. Uh, navigating ministers' kids' yeah. identity. So, so they could be doing, they could be working, they could be studying in Bible college. Uh, Sometimes they yeah, are. I was thinking, like, even in our Bible college, is it a conflict of interest? Or... <laughs> is it fine? Uh, no, no, not really. That's fine. That's fine. Yeah, yeah no problem. Uh, like, yeah. As long as they're okay with it. Yeah, thank you. You can correct uh, that information. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, I think that would be very interesting because uh, some children are dedicated into ministry <laughs> by the parents, <laughs> right? So the kids didn't have any say. Yeah, they didn't even they were not even you know at a speaking stage in life so, so they were dedicated into ministry and then uh, you know and so on so so it's good 
It's good to get that perspective. Nice. But so in that case, can I know any of our classmates are ministers, kids? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can just ask them. Uh, okay. Yeah. yeah, you can. I mean, if you're on a group, you can ask, or you can just put it on the screen and ask, you know, are, are there any okay, well, yeah, ministers? Yeah. yeah, so no problem. Sure. Yeah, thank you, Martin. Okay, so yeah, sure, sure. Um, so Abubakar has a question, are you going to submit our research work chapter by chapter or everything at once? So it's everything at once on the 4th of April, Abubakar. So the report, the research work will be submitted, the report will be submitted together, complete, uh, on or before um, 9 a.m., 4th of April, right? So before that, we are just discussing the status and so on. So, um, so the thing is, uh, Next Thursday, uh, before 9 a.m. India time, you submit a status, meaning an update. Uh, this is the work that I've done so far. So that's the only thing. So otherwise, uh, everything is together. You know, it's it's not in stages. It's together. The report that you submit. Hmm. Okay. Anyway, so to help John out, uh, how many uh, how many in class are uh, pastor's children, or you know, one of your parents, uh, pastor, or both are in ministry? Uh, you know, you could uh, maybe put your hand up or put it on the chat so he can contact you. Um. Okay. So, Rosalind, how do we submit the status? It's um, it's just a Word doc, but um, yeah, maybe I'll put it up. I'll put it. I'll create an assignment, and you can upload the Word doc, Word document, or PDF, whatever. Right. So, um, so you can do that. Okay. So, yeah, sure. Okay. Okay. So what you can do is, um, you know, during the week, as and when you are preparing, as and when you are doing the thing, if you have any questions, you know, just jot it down. Okay. So you can ask in class, and if those questions get answered during the week, maybe you know, during your research, you found the answers, and that's fine. You, know, you can just strike it off. But then, um, if you have those questions, uh, maybe you know, you can. Uh, just put it uh, so you can ask it in the class, right? Um, E-learning students, as and when you have the questions, I know you're putting it on the discussion uh, page, and I will answer e-learning you know, e e students. So, and also your submission of your status uh, report, you can put it on the discussion page. But actually, your uh, you, know, you can just carry on with your report any any questions at any point you can put it on the discussions page uh, this is for the e-learning students discussion section uh, okay i think uh, yeah that's it from my side unless you have any more questions uh, we can we can actually wind up yeah Okay, shall we shall we wind up then? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Divya. Thank you, Master. Uh, I just wanted to uh, ask regarding the status. Uh, mm. So, is there? Uh, uh, I was just checking. Um, like, uh, I can just put a word document out, or or is it um, something that you would provide us with a Google Doc or something? No, just a Google. word doc, just a word doc or a PDF, whatever you want to. Um, okay. That's right. That's right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Sure. Sure. Okay.
And I was just thinking the other day uh, that actually when you go through the word, you see that a lot of people have uh, actually put together uh, information, right? So actually put it together, turn it down, and it's a painstaking work. Um, like uh, I was thinking of Dr. Luke, like Luke uh, chapter one. This is how he says, you know, in as much as many have taken in hand, uh, in order to set a narrative of those things which have been fulfilled among us, just as those from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word delivered, delivered them to us, it seemed good to me also, having had perfect understanding of all things from the very first, to write to you an orderly count. You know, so he's just you know, putting all these things together and, and praise God, he was able to, you know, uh, each one of them actually, they, they thought, okay, it's important for, for me to capture this, write it down, put it there so that others can read. And ob obviously in the canon of scripture, we, have, we see the, you know, the hand of the Holy Spirit, God breathed, God inspired. So they wrote uh, uh, as the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. But the fact is that the human effort of, you know, sitting and, and sweating it out. And, you know. So, yeah, in a way, I guess uh, IRP is like that. So please <laughs> encourage yourself in this. Go to Luke chapter one and say, I'm one of those, you know, it, yeah, it's not canon of scripture or anything, but, uh, you know, it's going to be an eye opener for me. It's going to be an eye opener for anyone who's reading. It's going to be a blessing. Yeah. Okay. Okay, with these words, I shall bring these things to a close. Uh, <laughs> okay, so have a good day. Uh, we'll catch up uh, next week. All right? God bless you guys. Bye bye.